idea came to me uh, when I went to a conference in Paraguay in 2011, and Hugh Deller actually presented the idea. And uh, I thought it was very interesting coming from him because he is a major speaker. Uh, just to give a little bit of a background uh, story on my personal life, um, I was born in the U.S., but uh, so a little bit of a hypocritical aspect <laughs> for me saying that. Uh, but I was raised in Brazil uh, from the age of six, and uh, my introduction actually to uh, the language of English uh, as a more formal aspect was uh, through EFL learning. So actually, uh, my, both my parents are English teachers. My mom is Brazilian, my dad is American. And I, I was able to identify the difference between my mother being an English teacher and how she came across uh, the, the language learning environment. And uh, my dad, who uh, just went to Brazil and decided to teach English, uh, not having any academic background whatsoever. And he would come with different ideas as to teaching English, uh, apart from uh, my mom, who would actually go home and really study and really dedicate herself uh, because uh, she thought that that was the best thing to do. Uh, so I'm coming from those perspectives. Uh, of course, I'm coming from the idea that uh, the non-native speakers are the ones that actually have to learn the language and they understand how students actually struggle from the environment of uh, the, the classroom. And, uh, and the, the native speakers that I'm considering that uh, are the ones that simply for the fact that they know the language that they just want to go ahead and teach it, you know? And they don't actually do a lot of research and, and dedicate to it. Not, it uh, doesn't apply to anybody here, so. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just to give you like a heads up so you don't kill me afterwards. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, the idea of non-natives and native speakers. So uh, I'm picturing the scenario. So uh, you have been assigned a group to teach, um, and you have uh, just prepared a lesson with some difficult terms and with new uh, grammatical application. So what does a non-native speaker teacher do? And what does uh, a native speaker teacher, what do they actually do, right? Uh, so uh, coming from, let's just wait for it. <laughs> okay, so possible outcome. So the native speaker goes ahead and reads the text beforehand, uh, understands the overall meaning of the text, okay? So if you consider a more advanced group, perhaps. Uh, highlights the parts uh, worthy of debate. So, okay, so we should talk about this and students will be interested in this aspect. Uh, and uh, chooses a couple of examples to, uh, to work on uh, some grammar issues that may arise during the discussion. And what does a non-native speaker do? So reads the text beforehand, understands the overall meaning of the text. So far, no difference there. Uh, takes notes on new vocabulary, even vocabulary that they don't know or, or they would struggle with. Um, searches for new vocabulary in the dictionary and even comes up with examples and probably even uh, translations or uh, phonemic representation so that students can actually engage in that aspect. Um, establishes a practice with the new words and goes on to focus on the grammar, goes to the grammar bank and chooses a couple of examples of the grammar given and so on and so forth, you know? So a little bit of, uh, of a more uh, like enthusiastic way, okay? So like I said, from the native speaker that just goes and like waltzes in the classroom and just says, hello, good morning, I'm here. Uh, okay, so problems faced by non-natives. So I don't have enough Lexis. So those are some things that uh, even me, uh, nowadays I started teaching Portuguese and uh, I struggle with that. Okay, so maybe I don't, I know how the language works, but uh, like from speaking it, but I don't know actually how to explain that, right? So I have to use the dictionary and everything. Uh, my English isn't as good as a native's related to pronunciation and details within the language. Uh, I might get caught out, right? So what do I do if a student asks me, what's this? And they're like, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure I can trust my intuition, right? Uh, and uh, 
monolingual classes are different from multilingual classes. So even if you're uh, in a country, like I taught a lot in Brazil, so uh, I had uh, students that uh, all of them were Brazilians, basically, and uh, so the, the environment is, is quite different. Um, now problems faced by native teachers, so this, this comes uh, just to compare. Uh, I don't know what the present perfect continuous is, right? So uh, when I was doing CELTA, I actually had a lot of, uh, of uh, teachers come and uh, they were uh, Irish and they, they knew how to speak the language, of course, but they didn't, when it came to grammar and the structure of the language, that was the class that they were all like on the edge of their seats, like, wow, this is so amazing. <laughs> I've heard of this verb tense before, but I only know how to use it. I know the word, but my students don't understand my explanation nor my accent when I translate. Right? <laughs> my students speak uh, in L1, so I don't know what they're talking about, if they're talking about me. <laughs> and some aspects of my culture are different from my students, so even that aspect um, comes comes across. Now, the, the reason that I, that I thought of this is that uh, even uh, when I was listening to Hugh Deller, uh, he answered the particular question, uh, did, you, uh, did learning a foreign language help you become a better EFL teacher? And what he said was undoubtedly so, yes. This, uh, uh, this in turn made me reflect on the problems my students were having attaining anything like a similar degree of fluency and made me start to cast a critical eye on some aspects of the ELT as a separation of grammar and lexis and general obsession with sentence level rather than text level. Language, uh, text level language. Uh, the reluctance of materials to recycle conversations and revisit topics and so on. So, uh, when he, uh, he was talking about his experience uh, when he went to China and when he started teaching English there and he had to learn Chinese and he started struggling uh, like his students were struggling learning English, right? So he started like, he took a step back and he said, okay, so I actually have to assess the whole situation differently and I really have to focus on how I'm learning Chinese and how my students are going to learn English and so uh, I think that whenever you're learning another language uh, be it uh, Italian, Japanese, Chinese, uh, I don't know, uh, Irish for that matter uh, you really start uh, analyzing your own language and it makes it easier for you to compare uh, I uh, teaching here in Ireland actually gave me the opportunity to uh, teach uh, a lot of Brazilian students, but uh, don't get me wrong, I don't use Portuguese in the classroom. But at the same time, what I do is I actually come up with <coughs> words that are similar in, in Portuguese, so Latin-based words, and they understand it far better. And I also uh, I try to use the structure of the language so that they understand where I'm coming from and they are able to differentiate between English and Portuguese and for uh, Latin-based languages such as French, French, sorry, uh, French, Italian, Spanish, they are able to compare and contrast. And I also had the opportunity to uh, go through the structure of other languages such as Chinese, Korean, and Japanese and try to tell the students, okay, so you don't have this in your language, but you have something very similar to this in your language. So it's the, all about assessing and addressing their issues and, and how they are learning the language and also telling them a little bit of your story and your background when you started learning a language so that they actually relax in the classroom. They say, ah, okay, you've been in my situation once, so you are able to, to see where I'm coming from and the struggles and everything. Well, I think that that's basically it. Yeah, thank you.